Good evening. Welcome to Equis Ishio, an interdisciplinary national webinar series organized by the Postgraduate Department of English in association with IQAC, Maharaja's Government Autonomous College, Ernakulam, Kerala. On the fourth day of our program, we have an eminent person with us, Dr. Harris K., Assistant Professor of English, PSMO College, Thiruvangadi. And he is a recognized research guide under Calicut University. He did his MPhil at Pondicherry University under the guidance of Dr. N. Natarajan, the renowned theory teacher in India. He got his PhD degree from Calicut University in mysticism and fiction. He has been working as teacher trainer and trainer to students in qualifying competitive exams like TRF. His areas of interest are cultural studies and poetry teaching, teaching of poetry. He'll be dealing with cultural studies today, which is very crucial to the present day educational apparatus. Culture studies is a discipline between disciplines. It deals with the way the cultural artifacts like food habits, music, cinema, sports, sports events, and celebrity culture are being organized in the society. The meanings associated with cultural artifacts mentioned above are always governed by power relations. It analyzes how certain components of culture get more visibility and significance and is highlighted at the cost of subalternization or marginalization of some other components. In other words, we could say that cultural, cultural art, culture indicates the lifestyle and fashion of a very small group of people or a smaller section of society. Culture is a product which is made, marketed and consumed by the society or in other words, it's about power relations existing in the society. The crux of cultural studies lays in its analysis of discourse and textuality. As Stuart Hall says, the meaning production is being operated by some codes and the apparatuses. The relations and practices of production appear as symbolic vehicles within the hegemony of language and many more institutional structures of our society. These structures fabricate truth in guise of meaningful discourses. To unveil those deadly manifestations is very the, is very much significant. Hence, a paper on cultural studies is very important as it leads us to ponder upon the political invisibility of many dormant tendencies existing in our society. Hence, I invite Dr. Harris K with his paper titled Cultural Studies and Literary Research, Theory and Practice. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sabida. <clears throat> Thank you for the generous uh, introduction to me. And I, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this program at Maharaja's College, Arnangla, especially my dear friend, Dr. Sabida, for this kind of vibrant uh, coordination of this kind of a program. Thanks to the pandemic, because this is a a uh, beautiful moment for us to be academically engaged in the evenings. So uh, this is a great privilege for me to be part of the academic community of Maharaja's College, a college which has been the seat of many of the lovers and poets in, the, uh, in Kerala and uh, in, in South India and our nation in general. So uh, I'm asked to give a very brief presentation on culture studies and a little bit on literary research targeting the degree students. So I'm planning to give you a very brief outline, a preliminary outline to what culture studies is. And I'll be uh, trying to touch upon the research trends, emerging research trends in the area. So I have designed, I have divided my lecture into uh, three segments, uh, first 15 minutes, then, you know, the first 45 minutes, I'll be spending on three components, uh, culture, then um, second 15 minutes on culture studies, the third one on contemporary culture and research, as time permits, and the last 15 minutes will be on Probably, uh, if time permits, it will be on, on discussion. This is how I have uh, structured. So shall I come to the presentation, Dr. Sabida? 
yes sir yes sir no problem continue is clear everything is fine right yes okay. it is clear sir yeah now i can't see the messages and all so in case if there is an interruption please let me know uh please unmute and uh, speak to me okay otherwise i can't see the messages i i see only my my ppt here okay of course sir <clears throat> so um after all culture studies is all about culture it's about culture <clears throat> culture is the object of its study and we all know what culture is we all know the culture from an experiential dimension i experience culture you experience culture but the moment we are asked what is culture we have to stop and think life is something that we experience there is no problem of in i mean there is no problem in living we enjoy life and we live our life but the moment somebody is asking us what is life we need to stop and think a, a very banal something very common sensical daily life experience like lunch for example if somebody is asking you what is lunch we need to stop and think and we need to look at it from a philosophical perspective otherwise it is quite easy this process of stopping and thinking is what we call institutionalization of an experience this institutionalization of an experience reaches in what we call theory the moment we stop and think the moment we reflect on what culture is we are theorizing culture and this task of theorizing culture is done by what we call culture studies i'm giving you a very brief and general outline to what culture studies is i just told you that from the experiential dimension of something there is a transition to a very beautiful philosophical dimension of something and this philosophical dimension of things or any ontology is philosophically giving us the space for what we call theory so simply put culture studies is the theory of culture but this culture is something with which we are, all of us are familiar but we need to stop and think what culture do we have culture is something permeated everywhere around us our life is inseparable with culture it is intricately interlaced with our very being but we are to stop and think what it is we are examining our culture this is what the academics doing an unexamined life is not worth living at all as it is given by socrates the famous socratic statement an unexamined life is not worth living at all so the moment we start examining what kind of a life we live or why do you why do we live the kind of life that we live we are entering the process of philosophizing our experience why do you live the kind of life that you live this is a very philosophical question fundamental question that has been asked by philosopher like marx karl marx karl marx famous statement with which all of you are familiar all the philosophers right from the beginning of the theorization were trying to understand the world understand life understand experience and marx says the point is to change it so we need to change in order to change something we need to understand something the moment we come to know that there are some problems here and there in the way we live we need to change the desire for the change and the moment there is a desire for the change the first step to change the existing paradigm of system thinking and philosophy we need to understand we need to change the existing system we need to understand the existing system and that's why we can change it so this is the task carried out by culture studies to an extent and my the moment we uh, try to reach 
the paradigm of studies and education we enter the realm of research and what is research doing research is joining a conversation the existing conversation we come to know completely about the existing conversation and we make a review of it and we add something our contribution to the existing conversation so this is how i have divided my uh, presentation i have taken just 10 minutes so um, i'll be uh, trying to spend 15 minutes on each as i told you in the beginning let's come to the first component culture i'll just put a few definitions of culture and i'll try to problematize those culture those definitions first of all let's look at what culture is this is a very common sensical definition by eb taylor culture is that complex whole which includes knowledge we you know education is part of our culture belief system religion theology spirituality everything art film reading literature everything morals law customs and other capabilities and habits acquired by man man and woman yeah i, I took the definition as such by taylor that's why there is no woman as a member of society so this is a very generally understood definition of culture from a sociological perspective not from a critical perspective not from a theoretical perspective but purely from a sociological perspective then another a beautiful definition by clifford geets culture is simply the ensemble of stories we tell ourselves about ourselves it is stories after all life you know is narrated narrativized life is life only when it is narrativized our very self is the center of our narrative gravity i'm i'm, I'm quoting a concept from daniel dennett Daniel Dennett's notion of life being the self being the center of your narrative gravity. The moment we have a, a very problematic term like narrative, it is a political term. How do we narrate our life? I, I told you, after all, culture is a story. What is story? Story is a constructed narrative. when we construct something when we narrate something we have our own choice there are certain things that we prefer to include there are certain things we opt out there are certain things we exclude and it is our choice and now we understand it in in our contemporary media culture we are so much aware of this concept what we need to know as our life is something in our choice suppose i am watching a channel and if that news is something that i don't like i can go for a different truth and truth has become a choice now so is there a problem in this definition means culture is not essentially or inherently inbuilt or unchanging it is purely a constructed form of narration means the culture that we consider as culture may not be the only culture there may be another version of our understanding and there is a tendency of falling in line with the dominant narrative dominant culture dominantly accepted truths but there may be someone at least at least one among us who may not be happy with that dominantly accepted narrative for him that is not his culture i am simply problematizing a couple of definitions before you clifford geets definitions then you have another definition by margaret mead margaret mead is an american anthropologist culture is the learned behavior of a society or a subgroup learned behavior is there any problem in that definition what in by learned behavior who designs this learning whose learning is accepted as learning is there any problem learned behavior 
of a society or a subgroup all these are the traditionally accepted definitions of given we have uh, certain expressions like i say cultureless fellow why because he is spitting on the road yeah we would say that and he is a cultureless fellow because he is you know we have so many definitions of culture in our common day our our common sensical understand understanding of the term in our daily life and you have the famous canonical definition given by arnold with which all of you are familiar culture is the best which has been taught and said to make all men live in an atmosphere of sweetness and light this is a very famous definition with which all of you are familiar from arnold culture and anarchy and you know here again we have problem all of us are familiar with arnold's famous notion of touchstone method and in the touchstone method there is not even a single non european writer touchstone method is based on purely a tradition completely bound in western tradition western canon fr lewis for example in his great tradition we people are excluded eliot's famous notion of tradition is completely on eurocentric tradition so is there any problem you have the famous notorious statement by macaulay you know our education is not education in that sense so this kind of exclusion in the definitions are to be addressed so we have to problematize these definitions the moment we uh, problematize these definitions we know that there are certain uh, i mean issues regarding the eurocentrism and sometimes androcentrism and all these things are to be addressed you have some cultural critics and early post colonial critics like cd narasimhaya uh, who has written extensively on this eurocentrism in the a tradition the notion of tradition by people like arnold eliot and f r lewis so the task of culture studies is to problematize these definitions the age old definitions given to culture studies i'll just explain you just see a photograph two photographs in front of you and if i just to pose a very generalized question like which one is more cultured generally there is a tendency to opt for the first one and the other one you know but but you know think about if if you are given a job opportunity in these two offices in these two workplaces which one do you opt for you know introspectively if we ask ourselves in the normal common sensical i mean sense of the term we will be going for the first one <clears throat> but what is wrong with the other one we have our own arguments we have our own logics we would say the other one is laborious but do we prefer laborious task i mean we are always in connection with gym and all because we need physical labor you know that why do you go to gym we have our own arguments both the i mean pros and cons of both these cultures which one is more cultured if we opt for the first one is it your choice who told you that this is cultured should we examine our life is your truth your truth actually is the truth that you accept as your choice is it your choice who asked you to opt for the first one or the second one what is the difference have you ever thought of it is it our choice another picture appears on your slide now on your screen now we have two photographs and we have our own choice some of us our friends they 
go for the first one. Some of them go for the second one. They have their own argument. I'm asking, who decides the choice? Is it your choice? Who is behind the choice? Is it your truth? Why do you include the first one and exclude the other one? Why do you include the second one and exclude the first one? These are the questions that cult studies ask. Another interesting picture, you know. I, I took this from internet when both these, you know, vehicles have the same price, 137 rupees. If I am giving you an option to pick one as your own vehicle, you have all the reasons to go for the second one. Is it your choice? A bullet bike? What is wrong with a nano car? So our thought is not our thought. It is predetermined. It's a very you know, technical term with which all of you are familiar, Freudian term, you know. It is over determined. Over determined, I'm sorry, not predetermined, over determined. The decision is taken elsewhere. That elsewhere can be called discourse can be called ideology. I'll come to those things as, as time permits. So your choice is not your choice. Your ideas are not your ideas. The decision has been taken elsewhere. <clears throat> you, you, you Now you can see two photographs of two books. If I ask you a question like which of the following is a classic, all of you go for the first one, War and Peace. Why not other? Does it not entertain you? <clears throat> Don't you love the book? Mills and Boone? <clears throat> what is wrong with the other one? If this satisfies your reading, <clears throat> you know, potential, reading, you know, fulfillment, what is wrong with the other one? This is a love story. That again is a love story. You know? What is the criterion? If there is a criterion with which you are already familiar, with which you are happy with, you have your own arguments, these arguments are not your arguments. It is not our arguments. That is preset by something else. These are the fundamental, you know, basic principles that I would like to tell you regarding the very launching of cult studies. What makes it cultured? Who made it bad or good? Whose decision is that? Who designs your likes and dislikes? Are you choosing your likes. You know, Jane Austen is always there in the syllabus. Olive Rainer is not there in the syllabus. Most of you might have read, you know, Olive Rainer, far better novel than those by Jane Austen. But we can't see Olive Rainer in syllabus. Jane Austen is seen in the syllabus. She fits beautifully into the existing status quo of ideology. All of you are familiar with the famous opening of Pride and Prejudice, you know, when a man has enough, you know, esteem in social status and financial independence. And he is in need of a woman. He is in need of a wife. A very patriarchal statement, slightly anti-woman statement, a statement that questions the very agency of womanhood. But that novel has been included in the syllabus and it has been accepted as a classic Almost all the syllabus in almost all the universities contain this book. Why? Because it fits into what we call the existing ideology. Sometimes it may be androcentric, sometimes it may be eurocentric. It, it fits into the enlightenment the principles of rationality and all. Though there is a frame of complete exclusion, it's accepted as a classic. But it is not our choice. We too somewhere say that Jane Austen is a beautiful novel. We don't examine why do we say that. It is whose decision that Milton can be taught and Agatha Christie cannot be taught. Whose decision is that? You know, Tagore is in the syllabus. Khalil Gibran sometimes, you know, from a mystical perspective, Khalil Gibran's poems are far better than Rabindranath Tagore. Some of you may disagree, yeah. 
but we have time for argument at the end of the session. Why not Khalil Gibran in syllabus? We have here and there, yeah, but not as celebrated as Tagore. Have you ever thought of it? And who designs your curriculum? In the Western academics, Darwin is still not taught. Have you ever thought of it? Is it is Western civilization that much parochial, theologically oriented? Darwin is still not taught. You understand? So who designs your curriculum? My point is, why do we live the kind of life that we live? This is the question that Marx, Karl Marx asked. Have you ever thought of it? The moment we uh, you know, ask this kind of a question, we are simply interrogating ourselves. We are simply entering the terrain of what we call culture studies. So considering all these problems, I'm just giving you a definition by a culture studies critic, Raymond Williams. He says, culture includes the organization of production, the structure of family. You know. The moment we have a lauded phrase like organization of production, it's a very big issue, cultural issue. Now, you know, India is witnessing one of its largest strikes, farmer strike. You know, they are the producers, but do they get the benefit? Only that Mandi people, you know, they get the benefit. They are alienated from their own products. Alienation is a key term in Marxism. When I come to the theoretical part, of this culture studies, I'll tell you how far Marxism is instrumental in bringing about an institution like culture studies. So we have to look at the very culture. Why do farmers go on a strike? The very structure of family, think about it. Why the male counterpart in a family is always right? why this androcentrism, male-oriented cultural landscape is that much dominant in our existing paradigm of thinking. This is to be analyzed. So this is a Raymond Williams statement. Raymond Williams statements are highly packed, packed with ideas and loaded with, you know, you know, very philosophical. So I'm not going to explain each and every uh, one. I'll be uh, sharing the slides with uh, Dr. Sabida, and, and you can go to that in detail, and I'll be readily available for you to uh, talk to me over, I mean, telephone or WhatsApp, or, or uh, yeah, let's have, let's continue the conversation later. So I was trying to tell you that the, in, in such a backdrop, this kind of a definition comes, the structure of institutions which express or govern social relationships. You look at the nation, you look at the definition of democracy. Is it democratic? Actually, the long revolution is the phrase given by, you know, Raymond Williams to uh, democracy. And is democracy democratic? So the way the members in a society communicate, it is to be put into analysis, put into reflection, introspection, retrospection. That is why this kind of a definition comes. And the moment we enter a, a you know, paradigm of culture studies, I'll give you another bigger, better definition by Stuart Hall, one of the key pioneers of culture studies. And Stuart Hall is one of the, you know, key members figures in the Birmingham School, you know, critical, I mean, uh, Birmingham Center for uh, Culture Studies, one of the founding fathers. Let us look at his definition, considering all these problematics of the early definitions of culture, 
let us look at this one culture is not so much a set of things as we saw earlier you know by the american anthropologist i i, I told you taylor and so on it is not so much a set of things as a process a set of practices primarily culture is concerned with the production and exchange of meaning he is so much into the communication theory also he is a member of the new left and you know production of meaning i'm giving you certain truths now why do you believe it why do you not believe it who is asking you to believe it and in this mediation of truth so many things involved like the technology is involved <clears throat> media culture is involved so in the production and exchange of meaning the giving and taking of meaning between the members of a society so culture studies includes this kind of a politics who produces meaning what is this politics behind the production of that meaning and how the meaning is exchanged i can't go to examples now i don't have time much time to go to examples certain truth we take as a truth purely from a particular media and we know that they have their own politics behind that truth so we have to complicate the common sensically understood definitions of culture and the moment we complicate we enter the platform called culture studies so we know that culture studies or before we come to culture studies i, I let me conclude that part culture seems to be almost everything a key term in culture studies is inclusiveness i'll come to that and thereby culture studies is the study of almost everything everything comes under the purview of culture studies suppose this seminar culture comes under the purview of culture studies my laptop comes under the, you know technology everything digital media you know everything comes under this pandemic i'll come to that as time permits so inclusiveness becomes a catch word in in culture studies everything is to be part of culture everyone is to be part of culture the arnoldian definition of the high and low is to be completely obliterated just to be fully deleted everything is to be part of culture inclusiveness milson bones is as important as war and peace tagore is as important as Khalil Gibran or Khalil Gibran is as important as Tagore or more important than each other every there is no difference between a, a, a white collar job or a blue collar job or any other you know job outside the AC room so this kind of a an inclusiveness so when we come to the very discipline of culture studies the disciplinarity of culture studies we know everything is to be included culture studies is a platform where we have a, an anti disciplinary nature it shouldn't be you know culture studies emerges as a discipline to destroy all the disciplines all the grand narratives there is an incredulity towards meta narratives as we find in in leo thought you know postmodern condition his famous book postmodern condition incredulity towards meta narratives so culture studies is actually theorized and institutionalized in america rather than in in british in in britain british, because british culture studies is more or less marxist oriented and marxism itself is a discipline marxism itself is a grand narrative and these people want to question all the grand narratives because even the uh, according to a uh, people like leo thought um a, 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 i mean master narratives like marxism is a, a, a twin brother of enlightenment enlightenment is a master narrative enlightenment the project so that is to be discredited that is why 
an emergence of a platform without a platform is instrumentalized with the institution of culture studies. I was talking about the inclusiveness of this discipline. So everything, every subject and every discipline is to be part of this discipline. There is what we call a kind of interdisciplinarity. I'll take one by one. Philosophy, for example. I told you in the very beginning, the moment we stop and think what life is, we are philosophically looking at life. So how do we attribute meaning to our existence through our value and belief system? This is a very philosophical question. And meaning to our life is given to us. Sometimes it is preset. Sometimes it is a product given to us. Sometimes it is a process that we acquire contingently. So philosophy is inseparable from culture studies. Language, of course, we know that. Language is a carrier of culture, we know. Language is a maker of culture, we know. Language is an unmaker of culture, we know. So it is language that constructs culture. So is there any fluidity of culture as language has? Language is, after all, a fabric. You know, language is, after all, a textus. Language is, after all, a kind of text which has its own malleability, flexibility, possibility, incapacity, as well as capacity. Is culture something like that? Is culture a, a text which has its own textuality, which has its own possibility, which has its own aporetic space, which has its own lacunae, you know, its own theoretical impasse, where an area which you can't completely understand and address, does culture have this kind of space? So language becomes a metaphor to understand what culture is. So language and culture, literature, of course. Literature is so powerful. I'll, I'll come to you at the end of my presentation. I'll try to tell you certain the way how contemporary culture is reflected in literature. What is the re relation of literary forms to cultural forms? Media, sure. Are we constructed by the media? Why are they so powerful? Why do politicians try to influence media? Why are they afraid of media? Because mediated truth becomes the actual truth. The represented truth becomes the actual truth. Sometimes we fail to understand the synchronization between the actuality of the truth and the mediated truth. So media is so powerful. So media studies is a, an inseparable ingredient of the culture studies. History. I told you about Marx. We have to stop and think, why do we live the kind of life that we have been living so far? Is the history given to us? Is our history? We know a group called subaltern studies group. What is their function? What are they doing? They are questioning the hegemonic and the ideologically tuned historiography of Indian history. And they are trying to construct a history from below, a history with focal point on peasant insurgency and all. A history of inclusiveness, a history with a space for everyone, with a space for every member in the society, every marginalized sect in the society, considering all the little narratives available in the oral tradition of a particular culture. Economics. How do wealth and its distribution determine our way of life? Marxism, I told you, Marxism believes in the economic infrastructure and the cultural superstructure. The base of a cultural matrix is economics. You know, I'm available to you now just because of 
my sufficient amount of wealth to buy a laptop with me so that i could talk to you i have a, a mobile i have a, a you know internet connection with me i'm enough rich i'm rich enough to pay for that so who i am is designed by is defined by my financial infrastructure so a culture is inseparable from its economic base quite important sociology why do we have the social systems customs and structures that we do quite general something a, a very generalized statement with which all of you are familiar psychology why do we think in certain ways why does it mean to think what is thinking actually thinking is to be problematized why do you think in certain ways alone why do we change that thinking when somebody else you know exert his thinking on us so what is we have to think to what we think so psychology psychology comes as an inevitable ingredient in in cult studies so all these disciplines together bring about a focal point a, a space an academic space for cult studies cult studies should not be reduced to the mere position of a discipline they were afraid of it and with the you know formation of the frankfurt school and you know american uh, culture studies and all there is a complete reduction of culture studies into itself a discipline science and technology is very important now you know how does technology affects our way of life and you not explain you're familiar with that so when we come to the institutionalization of culture studies two schools two theoretical movements come into discussion one is post structuralism and the other one marxism the evolution of post structuralism leads to culture studies to an extent and marxism these are the two schools that prepared the foundation stone for the culture studies as a discipline to emerge i'll just begin with marxism i told you ideology is a key marxist term and from my presentation so far you have understood ideology is a key term it's an althusser term ideology i mean um, althusser's term ideology and we know that the ideology that i believe may not be my choice it is discursively formulated already it is trans discursively blocked sometimes it is purely transcendental to me given to me i don't have a, a an immanent dimension of the truths that i choose this given to me already and this is a key term in culture studies hegemony again hegemonically given to you truths and we are just a subject a subject where everything is given to us and our subjectivity is an inner subjectivity i am not an autonomous self i am a self completely caught in a matrix of linguistic determinism and discursive determinism and so on linguistic determinism meaning language determines what i should say i can't say what i want to say my language would say what i have to say the discourses to which i belong would say what i should say i am a subject and all the you know for enunciative modalities that fuko has analyzed would affect me there are certain statements that i should follow institutions i should follow i am a subject merely i am a subject a docile body to to borrow a phrase from fuko 
and my consent is not my consent my consent is a manufactured consent and i am interpolated <clears throat> interpolated meaning nobody should compel me to do something i myself believe that he is true he is right and i do that our women you know girls sometimes say that my husband is always right and how old are you film you know our uh, you know actress uh, at the, towards the end of the film says achan ana seri achan mathram ana seri you know husband is always right that kind of a statement so we are interpolated so isa and rsa ideological state apparatus and the repressive state apparatus <clears throat> repressive state apparatus like the police department you know they compel you to do certain things but ideological state apparatus apparatus they make us you know beautifully and silently believe that they are right and we fall in line with their truth interpretation and in all these you know the notion of power works who wields power all these things are put into question and the marxism you know power is an area where post structuralism and marxism merge i don't want to go to the details i'm giving you a very preliminary introduction as i told you in the very beginning and when we come to post structuralism <clears throat> post structuralism is a school that questions all the foundationalism all the grand narratives are questioned so post structuralism is a philosophy of anti foundationalism my culture also is culture why his culture alone you know the, the problems are i can't go to the details the problems you know as we believe in certain ideology some people they are marginalized forever you look at the very ideology of casteism in india as we believe in that particular truth a particular sect of society is always you know under privileged the moment we have a discipline in a school of thought like culture studies they start questioning this preset ideology post structuralism comes as a turn against foundationalism post structuralism believes in the space between binaries you know the famous definition given to deconstruction by paul demon paul demon says uh deconstruction is the assertion of the space between binaries you have male female hierarchy what about transgender what about the third gender with culture studies all these under privileged sections in society all the gray spaces got highlighted and the term like discourse is so crucial in post structuralism and discourse i told you with ha- with all its fundamental principles and features are so crucial in the understanding of culture studies things are discursively managed it's a discourse alone it is not an incorrigible truth it is not a truth truth essentially set forever it's only a discourse when the discourse changes truth changes religion for example is a discourse it has its own truth values truth principles and when the religion changes it changes that truth changes so every truth is discourse and there is no what we call the culture or the high culture it's only one of the cultures that is how it becomes so uncertainties and aesthetics of uncertainties become so dominant in in post structuralism and we find it in in uh, and in they they using it from culture studies provisionality again i'm not going through the details then uh, the concept of trace what in by trace when we have a truth when we have a statement we take one truth but there are certain truths which has been killed by us but the truth that we have killed will remain there as traces but the traces are to be discovered as spivak would say in her introduction to of grammatology you know the trace must be thought of before the being what is the being when i tell you something that something is the being but there are certain things that i have neglected 
and the neglected spaces should be asserted and they should be given their space. So this is an ethical injunction, you know, ethical process, according to post-structuralist. So trace. And all these, you know, these two schools in general bring about the philosophical and the literary and the critical foundation for culture studies. And coming to the last portion of my presentation, I'll be trying to finish my presentation within uh, 10 to 15 minutes. I'm sorry that I have lagged a little bit. Uh, I wanted to uh, finish by 45. Now it's already 50. I'll be finishing in 10 minutes, probably. Contemporary culture. What is contemporary culture? Two terms come to us now. One is pandemic. And the other one is online. These are the two terms that we are familiar with. In a broader sense of the term, pandemic, let me include it in the category called environmental disaster, you know, eco-disaster. It's a disaster problem. And it's a very uh, philosophical platform for us now. That's a different thing. Pandemic gave us a space for understanding about what we are. You know, agency. You know the word agent and patient. Patient is the opposite of the word agent. We are patients now, not agents. And online, I can broaden it into a platform which we call digital, digital culture. Everything is digitally mediated. So these two terms, environmental consciousness on the one side, digitality. So let me take two terms for you, for the benefit of the research students. You know, These are the two terms that we can explore now digitality, virtuality, you know, on the one side, and ecological consciousness on the other one. We literature students are, you know, humanities students. And literature is the center of humanities, we know that. As Northra Fry would say, literature is the center of humanities with philosophy on the one side and history on the other side, flanked, you know. So, we are humanities students, not science students. And in humanities, we have different, you know, aspects, different categories. I'm a humanities student, I'm a literature student. And if you ask me for my PhD, I would include it in emotive humanities. I did my PhD in mysticism, emotive humanities. And now in this, you know, ecological humanities or environmental humanities, it's a discipline or a platform for study, which researchers can include now. And we know that, what is this virtual truth, virtual reality? Actually, virtuality was a metaphor of actuality, the actual and the virtual. But now, the virtual has become the actual. It has become the new normal. Now you are available, I'm available to you and you are available to me virtually. It has become the, the truth. Earlier, you know, there was a time when our students started, you know, recording our classes and they would be sharing it with friends who has, you know, bunked the class. But teachers were angry at that because they believed that it is not actual class. It's a virtual class. It is only a metaphor of the class. But now we know that it has become the new normal. It has become the action. In such a platform, what are the things that we can explore? You know, we are in a digitally mediated culture. Digitality is our reality now, digital reality. And our self Autonomous self is digitally mediated. We know it is a posthumanist turn, quite visible to us. Posthumanism is there, has been there 
right from the beginning of modernity itself with the death of humanism and with the birth of liberal humanism itself we have the birth of post humanism with the launching of linguistic determinism when language state takes control the moment i start writing language takes control what does it mean language controls me man doesn't speak language language speaks man as heidegger would say so this is a post humanist turn and we understand it well and we are available you know my mobile number when i go for a positive i mean covid test you know they take my mobile number and my identity is extended into that mobile number and i am available in that mobile number and a kind of algorithmic governmentality works you know say it's, it's a term concept by anoint rovroy you know algorithmic governmentality meaning i'm available in the algorithm i'm available in the digital space i'm available in the google when i read kindle kindle reads me as i i told you earlier amazon knows my shopping interest my consumer interest now you know shopping malls have become cathedral but and consumerism our religion and in such a space all these malls have been transplanted into a digital space amazon knows my interest kindle knows what kind of book i should read youtube knows what kind of you know videos i should watch they give us notification they give me you know certain suggestions this is a video that you like they know me and my aadhar number you know it speaks everything about me to the government so we are passing through a kind of risk society and the negedens and erlich backs famous notion of risk society i don't want to go to the details now you know as as time uh, you know exceeds i'm not going to the details now so the government has the potential to understand us and our life has in in the common sensical you know sense of the term risk it has its own risk our, our life is has its own risk when i speak to you over you know in a digital medium i should be very careful in the sense that some statements may turn against me later i'm very careful about it the one sense and to use a concept from delus and gatari you know the truth is rhizomatic reality is rhizomatic not linear everybody has a space i'm trying to connect everything with culture studies everything has its space in a, a, a tree you know grows from one position to the other in a very linear fashion but a you know rhizome has shoots everywhere potential from shoots everywhere it has space to every everybody has its space and everything has its inclusive space earlier if we write a poem you know we would send to a, a publisher and according to the hierarchy they will publish it now i can publish it with you know in my facebook wall i can publish it along with i don't know the no problem you understand rhizomatic rhizomatic is the first chapter of 1000 plateaus by delus and gatarino and one more concept by this delus and gatarino desiring machine what in by desiring machine our you know technological advancements made us desiring machine my mobile phone you know actually the primary function of my mobile phone is to make a call but this has all the possibilities this is a calculator this is a videograph you know there are it's possible and at the same time i can use it for many other purpose also it is where i am a desiring machine i am using it for certain different purpose also you know if a mosquito comes i beat you know this is just like a, a bricolier function i do that 
recall it because it's a postural term but desiring machine is a uh, uh, i mean positive and is a philosophical term introduced by the delusion gathering team my point is all these things can be explored in contemporary research i'll just give you certain terms which can be used in in uh, research um our ma students you know in their dissertation and all they can go, go for terms like a uh, depopulation narratives bio regionalism eco dystopia discard studies eco disaster outbreak narratives apocalypse then discard uh, yeah I, i i repeated the term discard studies then critical animal studies and so on so uh with this i would like to it's 8 o'clock now the time given to me is over i i really wanted to speak uh on each of these for 2 minutes but i'm sorry i couldn't uh, do that so i'm i'm stopping here once again i thank all the organizers of maharaja's college the head of the department the principal and all the faculty members in the uh department especially uh dr sabida who invited me and all the student uh, participants research scholars and all thank you thank you sir thank you harry sir for giving us a general framework okay. of cultural studies and that too in a, uh, taking examples from our own common life our own life Uh, in a very humorous manner also regarding mosquito examples and other things now you have explained how do we attribute <laughs> how do we attribute meanings to our existence and how do the language literature and media act as powerful agents in the dissemination of culturally constructed stereotypical notions you unveil the notion of context where discourses construct or fabricate truths you talked about that problematization of common rudimentary factors of our life is governed by the orthodox ideologies existing in our society and you touched upon issues like feminism racism post structuralism and marxism i'm sure the participants must have been influenced by your entertain and entertained and enlightened by your speech also sir there are many questions in the chat box and uh, words of appreciation are also there sir So right now I invite Miss Lakshmi Raj of first semester student to begin the question answer session. Sabita Sabita madam uh, can I respond to the questions over WhatsApp later? I think it's already one hour right? If you collect all the questions and send me It's point. okay sir just uh, it, it, there won't be any problem okay. sir if you have any network connection issues so uh, yeah, just yeah, one second one hour I in between if the voice breaks you know if i i can write the answers in detail and share with you if it's okay that would be better i think yeah okay then okay sir okay. because uh, actually uh, you have connection issue sir right now there is no issue but you know in in case it comes you know i'll be more comfortable in in explaining it in writing and sharing with you it's already one hour that's why i thought of it Uh, it, it, no need to worry about the hours. Just one, at least two questions. Just for okay, the. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, no okay. problem. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Then Lakshmi. Lakshmi. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ah. Okay. 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 Good evening, sir. First of all, thank you for the fabulous presentation. Yeah. And there are some questions in the chat box, and we'll read it out to you. The first question is asked by Vaishnavi V. Ah, uh, the question is. Uh, what do you think about the connection between comparative literature and cultural studies okay it's a uh, very beautiful question and an, an expected question and a question that generally students ask in any discussion on on cultural studies you know comparative literature is uh, giving space for uh, inclusion inclusiveness as i told you you know and um comparative literature actually comes as a an extension of or a kind of a branch of this cultural studies yeah and here in in comparative literature we know that uh, we have been 
uh, including one particular uh, aspect of the particular you know studies branch with similar uh, you know, discourse from a different platform breaking the hierarchical binaries and it is here and and that kind of a practice is actually placed on the theoretical foundation of culture studies i mean to put uh, a, a brief answer to your question somebody would prefer could be a, a practical version of the culture studies as a theory and there is nothing called one one uh, commonality between the two is there is nothing called the culture studies as such this is the culture studies we can't say culture studies is a platform i told you similarly we can't say this is comparative literature i'll tell you american literature we can say that this american literature robert frost you know san american literature or tennessee williams american literature and arkanaran indian literature and what is comparative literature we can't say we can't so this is comparative literature it's only a kind of practical form of the principle envisaged in culture studies platforms you get me fine thank you sir is there any other question left uh, there are few questions in the chat box okay uh, you can ask one more question because we are okay it's already 8 10 no no problem sir no, i i i can respond to it in detail no problem that's why i i told you that uh, question uh, question answer session uh, it is more important than the presentation so we need to address every question in detail that's why i thought of writing uh, and and sending to you no problem anyway if you ask it now no problem but by the way can be more detail that's why that's why i suggested If if I could finish it by seven forty-five itself, I would have gone for the question section. Sorry for that, I couldn't finish it. Okay, the next question, uh, Lakshmi. Okay, ma'am. The next question is, uh, what is the need for literature to analyze the evolutionary stages while examining the social and cultural history and evolutionary stage of an individual? Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, yes, Lakshmi. Hari sir. Hari sir. He seems to have lost his connection. Lakshmi, could you repeat the question once again? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. what is the need for literature to analyze the evolutionary stages while examining the social and cultural history and evolutionary stage of an individual i think our resource person has lost his connection actually there is a heavy rain in malappuram that's the reason is from malappuram okay it's okay uh, we could wind up our session before winding up i would like to invite archna and hill from first time english to for the vote of thanks so good evening everyone i'm very honored to have the opportunity to propose the vote of thanks on this auspicious evening on behalf of the english english department of maharaja's college I want to thank our chief guest, Dr. Harry S. K. C. C. M. O. College, Sir Rangadi, for enlightening us with valuable words. Thank you, sir. I further extend my hearty thanks to Dr. Matthew George, the Honorable Principal of Maharaja's College, for making this event happen. Thank you, sir. 
I take this opportunity to specially express my deep regards to the IQC department of our college for coordinating this beautiful function. Especially thank you, Sandor sir. I would especially thank Dr. Rega Kari, the head of the department of our college, for providing us opportunities to organize such events. Thank you, ma'am. And my deeper sense of appreciation to Sabdais Babu, our coordinator, without whom the program wouldn't have been this much successful. Thank you, ma'am, for your unfortunate support. And I convey a heartly gratitude to the loving teachers and students of our department for being always with us and being for the pillars of support. And last but not least, a big thanks to all the participants who chose to be live with us and attended the webinar with great enthusiasm and made the event a successful one. Once again, I thank you all. Excuse me, Savida. I, I couldn't respond to the second question. Uh, could you please repeat it for me? <laughs> Sir, because you were not there, we were simply giving no, you no, I, I, Yeah. yeah okay, I, so I, 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 I could get it. I could get it. But unfortunately, uh, at that particular moment when you were asking the second question, I was out. So okay, no problem. Really you are, uh, okay, okay. Lakshmi. If it wouldn't upset the whole system, I can answer to it now. No, no the system itself is to be questioned, sir. That's why we are dealing with cultural studies okay. and other things. Okay, okay, so let's go on with the question. Yeah. Sir, uh, the second question is, um, what is the need for literature to analyze the evolutionary stages while examining the social and cultural history and evolutionary stage of an individual? Yeah, it's a very general question. I mean, what is literature doing? And in between, I told you, literature is a... Uh, platform that gives us space for looking at life. Uh, I mean, this is actually a definition of what is literature doing. You know, literature is giving us space for alternative thinking, possible world. I'm a human being and society has given me one role and I am in, in sociology I can act that role. And I'm a teacher and I'm manifesting that role. I'm representing that role. I'm acting out that role. And I'm a good man, for example, I'll be acting out that role. If I'm a bad man, I'm acting out that role. But literature is giving me alternative space to look at different roles means it is only from a literature perspective that we can have space for alternative perspectives. In Bashir's novel, for example, Shabdangal, there is a mom, Amma. Amma is always an embodiment of virtue. And we have the other binary, prostitute, for example. Prostitute is not always, I mean, it's never connected with the mother figure. Can a mother be a prostitute? Can a prostitute be a mother? In a literature platform, this is possible. An alternate space is available. And in Shabdangal, we have a mother, very loving mother, you know, involved in prostitution. So it is here the need of literature is to be highlighted. So this kind of a question uh, is an introspective question, I think. A, a literature student is asking herself the need for literature. Sahityam in the Avishagada. Sahityam in the Avishagada is a very, uh, you know, big topic that we have. Yeah, I mean, Sabida ma'am can have so many, uh, you know, webinars and webinars. Why literature? The use of literature, you know. There's a beautiful book I, I can suggest by Rida Felsky. Rida Felsky's famous book, The Uses of Literature. Yeah, uh, that, that student can make a note of that book and try to read it. I can WhatsApp if you want, you know, The Uses of Literature. It's a very beautiful book. Yeah, fine. Okay, so thank you once again uh, to all the organizers and Sabida, ma'am, and all the students over here, very disciplined students, very enthusiastic, and so much interested in this academic activities and all. And the, the, you know, the, the relationship between uh, the students and the coordinator is very visible here. So I wish you beautiful tomorrows with this kind of a uh, 
rapport and academic exercise and dynamic cooperation. Thank you once again. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, dear students also, sir. They are my students. I am their tutor. That is the relationship. And uh, thank you uh, very much, my dear participants. And today's session with this, we are winding up our session today. Tomorrow, uh, we are very fortunate. In spite of being Sunday, we got a very eminent person with us, Dr. Bulbul Gupta from MM College, Modi Nagar, Ghaziabad, who is going to uh, present a paper on transgender studies, some concepts and issues. So we'll meet tomorrow. Thank you.